What's going on everyone? Steven here. In this video I'm going to show you how to give yourself infinite health and infinite stamina in Far Cry 6. If you're just interested in using the cheats, if you look in the video description I have a link to the cheat table so you can just go grab that, use it, and you're good to go. Uh, but if you want to learn some more stuff about Cheat Engine or, you know, if you, um, if they do like a game update and I'm not around to, you know, update the cheats, which is pretty common because once I hack a game I usually leave it <laughs> and don't touch it again. Uh, yeah, this video will be good for helping you do that. So <clears throat> anyway, okay, so uh, the first thing that you want to do is you'll do a new scan for a value type of a float and that's what the value of health is represented as a four byte scan would find it but the value that you would actually see is like a big number that doesn't really seem to mean anything so if we do a scan for a float let's do an unknown initial value for a scan and then once this finishes what you want to do is uh, take some damage all right or something that will modify your health so I'm gonna jump off of here and see if I can take some damage all right there's some fall damage so I'm gonna hit escape and I'm gonna say that's a changed value and then I'm gonna come back into the game here and I'm gonna let that health start to increase and as soon as it does I'm gonna hit escape again and there we go. Now I'm going to search for another changed value. <clears throat> now I'm going to search for an unchanged value. And I'm going to do it again. Okay, and then I'm going to let health fill all the way back up. So basically I'm just looking for changed and unchanged values as health changes. Sometimes you don't know if it's increased or decreased value so I usually just go for changed, unchanged, and I can whittle my way there pretty quickly. All right, so there we have max health again. So we're going to go changed value. And then we'll say unchanged. <clears throat> now let's move around in the game a little bit. Go back here, unchanged value, because our health hasn't changed. We can kind of keep clicking that if we want to try to whittle it down. We can compare to first scan and say that this is an unchanged value because... We scanned, the very first scan that we did was when our health was full. It's full now, so if we compare where we are now with what we first did, that'll be an unchanged value. All right, that whittled down a lot. We can do that again. <coughs> can move around. And go back, unchanged. All right, so now what I'm going to do is untoggle that compare to first scan. And I'm going to jump off of this cliff here to take some more damage. And uh, once we get up here <clears throat> to jump off again, I'm going to do uh, unchanged again, actually, because there's a lot of stuff that's changed here. Okay, now I'm going to jump off, take damage. Okay, now I'm going to go changed. And then when health starts increasing, I'm just going to kind of keep clicking changed. Because the results are so low right now, the found results, I can do this without it taking long to refresh the results. Change, change, change. All right, I'm going to stop right before it finishes maxing out. Boom, it's maxed out. I'm going to go changed and then unchanged since we see there's still some stuff that was changing there. Okay, so what kind of values look like they might have something to do with health? This number, these with like an exponentiated value, that's typically not anything. So you can disregard those. 11, 18 seems like a weird number. This seems like a weird number. So does this one. Usually it ends in a 0 or a 5. <clears throat> Your health, something like that. 175 is kind of odd. Two, the first scan was this value, so that's not, that's probably not it. Odd looking, 175. Okay, it could be one because sometimes health is represented in a float as one, and then as you lose health, it'll be like 0.5 or whatever, right? But since I've already done this, I know that it's not that one. So out of everything else, the 175s seem to be the next best thing still kind of odd looking if you are very familiar with doing this type of stuff 
but you know um, let's try it and see what happens here so I'm gonna change this first one to 150 nothing happened let's try to change the second one to 150 and look our health decreased and now it's filling back up so this is our health value all right so I'm gonna get rid of that I'm gonna get rid of these two all right let's right click and say find what writes to this address okay Now I'm going to jump off and see what writes to the address whenever we take damage. All right, so we've got that instruction that writes. And once our health starts filling back up, let's see if this instruction is also used. Because that'll tell us, you know, we're dealing with a shared instruction that, uh, yep, you can see the count is increasing. So um, this instruction writes health when we lose it, when we gain it, and all that. All right, so now that we know that, we can stop this. All right, let's show the disassembler. We want to see that instruction. Now let's see if there are any other memory addresses that this instruction accesses, okay? Find out what addresses this instruction accesses. That's what we want to do. So we'll click that. <clears throat> we'll come in here, run around. All right, look at that. I hit shift and there's that. So that is stamina, okay? And so here, like, you know, this was just kind of like, as you do this stuff more and more, you kind of start correlating like, oh, I did this in the game and this value kind of looks like it might have something to do with that. So 100 is like the maximum stamina value. Well, let's go ahead and lose some health again and see what pops up. All right, that was too high. We died. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so this is a great thing. We see this instruction, uh, what else it's doing now as we load in. So check this out. We've got a bunch of 100s. We've got a 70, a couple more 100s. We have no idea what that stuff is, right? But let's, so there's our stamina again, okay? Let's see if we can, let's see if we can do this without dying. <laughs> I got to find just the right height to fall off of. <laughs> all right, so here I'm, I'm going to ignore all these because these look like memory addresses that just have garbage in them now. Like all these are like, you know, reinitializing. All right, so let's see. Maybe this is a good, ah, we're back here to this point. Okay, let's try not to jump so high off. Okay, so we'll do this. All right, and we've got our stamina value down there. If I hit shift and then jump off here, boom, there's health. So here's health, here's stamina, here's a few other things. So this is where you could compare um, data structures and see like what the differences are. I typically like to look around in the registers first and compare. So this is health, this is stamina, we don't know what these things are, but we are interested in like how to like differentiate ourselves because we want to create uh, one script that will give us infinite health and infinite stamina, right? So for the stamina one here, I'm going to right click and go show register states. And all that we're looking is just data that's sitting in registers, like what's what kind of values are sitting in these registers. And then we're going to try to like compare those against one another to um, single ourselves out, right? Okay, so those are those, but let's just get a, a little smattering of a few others here that we don't know what they are. They're probably like NPC health and stuff like that, or animals in the environment. All right, so I've got a few up here. Let's do one more. Let's say this one. Okay, so now... Boom, we've got all those. So now what I'll do is I'll look at like RAX. And if I see like a huge number that looks like a pointer or a memory address or something like that, I usually kind of ignore it, at least insofar as <clears throat> when they all have that same kind of looking big address, okay? I'm more interested in something like here, RDX is zero. Here, there looks to be a memory address. 
Here, RDX is 0, 0. There's too many differences between all these. I'm looking for something where these four over here are differentiated from our two, where these two have to do with us, our health and our stamina, right? So as you look down, one of the first things that you'll come to is R9. And in R9, when it's us, there is a zero, okay? When it's whatever else is here, it looks like there's a one, right? So that looks like that might be a good differentiator for us. If zero is in R9, then, you know, whatever we do with the instruction, right? Whether it's skipping it, putting our own value somewhere, or whatever, okay? Well, I can tell you now that that's what I did at first. And with a little more playtesting, I discovered that there was a couple of enemies that were getting infinite health as well. So I needed to do more than just this, okay? But I did need to start with this. So first, checking for zero in R9, all right, that whittles out a ton of other potential candidates that we don't want to give infinite health to or whatever. You know what I mean? The next thing is going to be R12. Okay, so we see R12 for us here. We have all Fs, then all zeros. Okay, well, we see all zeros in this one. So um, <clears throat> maybe we could check for um, like R12, if it's all Fs, then that would have to do with our health, right? And then if R12 is zero, then that could be our stamina or whichever one of these is whichever. You know what I mean? I don't recall which one exactly is which from what we opened up here. But the thing is, even though all of these are zeros over here, and so is this one for us, we're not going to hit these presumably because first we're checking for the value in R9. So these will be whittled out first. So these having zeros won't matter, right? So then when it comes to the one enemy that I found that did have a zero in R9, okay, their R12 has like a memory address in it. So now I have what I need to set up a cheat, okay? So sorry some of this is kind of like theoretical and I'm doing it without showing it here, but it's kind of like a, a ton of stuff to do over here. So um, <clears throat> it's kind of far from this point, but hopefully you understand what I'm getting at here. We're just looking at values and registers and comparing and whatnot. So sometimes it's not enough just to do one comparison. Sometimes you can take multiple values, compare them against each other, and filter your way down to whatever you want to do, right? All right, so now we know R9, we want zero, and then after that, we want to see an FF, all Fs in the lower portion of R12, or zeros, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close all these, and that has to do with this instruction here, okay? So we want the move XMM0 to happen if it's enemies and stuff like that, right? So we basically, this conditional jump here, jump if equal, we want that jump to happen if it's us, okay? And luckily we have a compare happen, happening right here before the jump, okay? So that means if we can do our stuff before this compare, whatever we want to do, okay? Like if we do something up here, we start here, we don't have to worry about preserving the flags register. And so this comparison will set the flags register for whatever it needs natively. But if we do our own compare before here, and then we skip this compare, and we just go straight to this jump, this will be an equal based on what we are going to check for. So here, this is kind of like understanding assembly enough to understand how the code flows to be able to write a specific type of cheat. You know what I mean? All right, so with this here, like bearing that in mind, 
I'm going to open up the cheat that I've currently written. Okay, so this is exactly the same spot that we were looking at, right? That's where I decided to inject on that instruction there. Okay, so instead of doing like push F and then pop F, I don't need to worry about doing that because I'm going to do my own compares, right? So we're going to compare 0 to R9. That's that first comparison we wanted to do. If it's not equal, jump to code. So this is the original stuff. It'll do its own compare, set the flags register, and then jump to return, which will jump to the point where um, here to this jump, right? So this jump will happen or not, right? So natively, it'll just do what it does. Okay, so that's if it's not equal, go there. Okay, so here the next check is checking for health. Or stamina. I can't remember which one it is right now. I should have made a comment like health. I think it is health. Anyway. <laughs> so then I'm checking R12D, so the lower half of the R12 register, right, which is a 64 bit. Um, we're checking the lower half of that for this value. If it's equal, we're going to go, we're going to jump forward to an anonymous label that we specify here. Okay. So then we'll do this MINSS instruction just to set up XMM0 to be how it's doing here, right? So I think it's purely doing that just for the compare. I didn't read through the rest of this like subroutine to find if we need to worry about XMM0 beyond this point. But I just did it just because, right? And then I jump to return, which again is going to return us to here, right? And we know that the jump if equal will happen because our flags register is set to equality. Jump if equal forward, the flags register will be maintained, its values throughout this. So another jump if equal that it sees here, it will also take that jump, right? Boom, we got that. Okay, if it's not equal though, then it's just going to do another compare, which is going to check for the stamina. I think this was the stamina, right? Now remember, we saw these zeros in those other registers uh, or for the other values, but they weren't, they had a one in R9, so we don't have to worry about those, right? So anyway, this differentiates. Uh, in R12, after this is successful, you know, the other NPCs or whatever, enemies, um, they had that, like, memory address sitting in there. So if it's zero, right, if it's equal, then we'll jump to here and we'll do our stuff. Otherwise, it'll jump to code, which is here, which does what the game natively does, okay? So those two checks happen, right? If it's equal, we, we know it's health. If this is equal, then we know it's our stamina both of those jump to here otherwise it goes to code all right and that's it so you know as with most things play testing is a good way for you to figure out what more might I need to build upon for different types of checks like this right you might not just do one thing you might need to do more than that this still may not be enough as I play through the game more and more I may find that certain other things you know now have infinite health as well maybe you end up scrapping all this and you like compare structures and you see that there's some value sitting in an offset there that that's all you need to worry about or maybe you need to add that in at the end of these three checks right <laughs> so anyway let me go ahead and enable this and I'm gonna run up here now I should be able to do the big ginormous drop off and live this will be a test to see what happens for that all right all right I think she kind of like hit the rock face a bit sooner than hitting the ground but uh, let's try this again just to see because I've got to see it happen before you know because what this will tell us is like you know if I die here then there's some kind of other instruction that we might need to worry about checking out. Alright, here we go. 
There we go. All right, so we're good to go. Sweet. And now I'm going to run. And she'll start breathing because she starts breathing after X amount of time, like heavily. But as you can see, you can just continue to run and run and run and run. And we have infinite stamina. So infinite stamina, infinite health. And then in that other video, infinite weapons or ammo, I'm sorry. So let me enable that since I said I was going to run that. Okay. We can just sit here and shoot till the cows come home, right? All right. And that's with every weapon. So, I mean, between these things right here, you're pretty much good to go <laughs> with just, you know, setting yourself up to blaze through the level, right? Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention about the health is with it being 175. I've got this going in story mode because I want it to be a little bit easier, right? So that it's easier to like find values and have more time to do stuff without the game being too crazy challenging. This uh, actual health might end up being something like um, 100, like in the regular mode where it's a little bit harder, right? So that's why this 175 might be a little weird. Maybe it tacks on another 75 health or something just as that little extra boost, right? So, anyway, just a random thought there. Okay, cool deal. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got some other stuff that I want to try to do for this, so I'm going to try to work on that and uh, try to get another video out, or three or four, and we'll see what happens. So, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll talk to you all in the next video. Take care.